Over the past four years, I've been working on this concept of a game that I can play with friends. It started out as a bit of crummy pixel art, and then it turned into crummy pixel art with spotty networking. And although coding the networking for this game is challenging, I will say it was quite a joy when it first worked. Okay, so I'm into. What grass blade are you buying? Yeah. Uh, grass blade number 349,087. Oh, wait. Oh, there ah! you are. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Okay. This is so cool. But I always imagine something a bit more three-dimensional. So I started trying with this interesting two and a half HD-esque pixel art approach. And I made this little guy blue just as a pixel art representation of blueprinting out an idea. And that kind of makes me happy. But nothing was feeling right. So now we're gonna take everything that we created, bundle all up nice and tightly, and throw it away to learn something new. And I wanna try to make this game feel like a retro-esque inspired 3D game where I can romp around with friends in various game modes. But we're not gonna do the retro part now. We're gonna actually start focusing on one of the game modes. The game mode we're gonna start with will be like a snowball fight. But I spend most of my time dabbling with tiny pixels and tiny bits of code, and I have no idea how to make a 3D platforming game. So we start our adventure in Unreal Engine 5.2 with a tutorial on how to use Unreal Engine. Going through the various tutorials on YouTube, I found this creator, Dev Enabled, who has some very nice videos on learning the engine. They do a great job not only showing you how to do something, but explain why that is that something that must be done. This is great as it's important for me to know why I'm adding a certain node or clicking a certain button. So for me, learning as much as the why as you're learning the how can make learning easier, you know? So let's build the game, starting with this tutorial and see what happens next. Almost right away in Unreal Engine, I find these input actions confusing. Or interesting is maybe the right word. In Game Maker Studio 2, I would just write press A is X plus equal 5 or something. But here I have to go into the properties panel to set up input actions to use by a player controller elsewhere in the engine. I almost wish if I'm going to be coding in blueprints, then I want as much of my interface to be in blueprints or an extended attribute panel of that blueprint node. I'm ultimately going to have to get used to navigating these various properties and configs and menus or submenus, but I think I'm just experiencing some growing pains. I do acknowledge that I probably should be using enhanced input actions opposed to input actions as input actions is being or has been deprecated. However, the tutorial does not cover that, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I will definitely look into enhanced input actions down the road though. And then we start skimming the surface of the character movement components. So daunting at a glance, but I find this pretty fascinating. It has so many convenient built-in attributes that offer these functions. There's a lot to delve into here, and I do look forward to drinking some coffee and reading up through the documentations on a fun snowy weekend. Another hurdle for me is learning how a character moves in 3D space. Over the past few years, I've made a series of 2D game concepts, and as a result, have only really dealt with two axes, X and Y, and now I'm exploring three, X, Y, and Z. I have a decent amount of experience working in CG as well, but Unreal is a bit different with its orientation that does consistently trip me up. But with all that initial learning out of the way and more to come, we have our first moving 3D video game character. I always feel proud when I get to this first step of making any game, and the feeling is no different here. This is some of the simplest progress we can make, but I can't overstate the excitement I feel when I get to press a button and see this little gray buddy moving. The tutorial does go into many, many more movement options and animations, but I just wanted to pause and call it how great these first little steps feel when you make something new. It's so cool. But on to the next step. Now we continue to add all of the other movement functions which the tutorial does a good job going step by step and even shows you how to set up something quickly where it can break and how to rebuild it from scratch in a more beneficial way. All very cool. But what I spent so much of my time doing is trying to better understand vectors. I've never really had to use vectors in any of my previous games. I was able to dodge them, so I'm not going to be a source of information on the subject. But you can see me printing out the results of the rotator and direction and so on. I have a ball doing this later as well, literally, but what I've learned is a vector in Unreal is a set of three floating point numbers that can store position, direction, velocity, movement, and so on. But it helped me to think of a 3D vector as a chessboard with a vertical axis, showing you basically the position or location or trajectory of an object. And Unreal has a lot of nice built-in functions to handle processes when past the correct vector node, which is in part why I linger on this topic because there are so many vector nodes and I just wanted to understand when and what what to use. The concept is still a bit abstract for me, 
that is beginning to make more sense. I will continue exploring this in the video later on and obviously offline. But now we have essentially a moving and jumping character and with a little bit of code cleanup later, we get to move on to animation. What I liked about the animation portion of the tutorial is it helped me grasp how to call variables set by different components, which I think helps me understand the visual scripting concept. Again, just to compare it to Game Maker Studio 2, I would just write obj.var to retrieve the data from another object. In this case, I create a reference to the component and then I can begin retrieving data from that component. Not bad, I like that. One thing that is confusing me is cast to BP. How I'm using it here, I would better understand it as retrieve from BP, but I also don't know what I don't know and only partially understand what I think I might know. So basically I need to look up this note a little bit more as I continue my learning journey. The actual assignments of animation is quite nice. I really do love this visual state machine. I can only imagine how wiry these things can get, and I'm kind of excited about organizing it when it becomes out of hand. Is that weird? I also enjoy setting these timeline controls and adjusting which pose can change into another pose. I think here I am using a simplified version, but excited to move on to something more complex. But I think the biggest struggle is just learning the different words for several things and where those options exist. There are tons of nested options that I can feel pretty lost most times. And it does me wonder how other 3D engines solve similar problems and think it would be fun to experiment with Godot, Unity, and maybe even Bevy in the future to compare and contrast my experiences. And just like that, we have a walking and jumping character. There's a lot more to this tutorial and I ended up aggressively commenting, adding notes to myself along the way. Sometimes it just helps to talk to myself to see if I better understand it or even to revisit the question and realize how little I knew at the time. But fast forward after a few nights of following along and then now we have this beautiful looking tutorial finish. It's impressive what Devin Abled was able to cover and I'm forever grateful for this series of videos that I was able to learn from. But now that this is finished, how do we add snow? Before we add snow, we need a character that better represents the vibe of the game. This isn't 100% what I'm going for, but these little buddies are super cute and more playful. I'm going to go ahead and grab the free character from this creator just so I can start experimenting, but I will come back and buy a pack from them in the future to share my gratitude. I'll post a link to their store page in the description if anyone wants to go check them out and show some support. But who knows, maybe we just have all of these be our beta characters as we try to find something with a bit more nostalgia. But we don't only need characters, we also need animation, and Mixamo is a great resource to get free animations on your mesh and skeletons. Not a sponsor. I scrubbed through the site and tried to get what I think I might need. Walk, run, jump, crouch, crouch walk, etc. It's an amazing site and an amazing service. In the future, I hope to work with a friend and to replace some of these custom animations down the road, but this is a great start. And now we import. I did this over a stream as it was mostly repetitive. I did a test beforehand and saw how much time it would take to make sure I could preserve my tutorial content. So very carefully, I made our new proto character and began importing and swapping out the animations. Notably, I suppose my model is very, very small as I have to scale up by a large amount. This does bite me a bit later on, but word of advice, if you're swapping something out, it's good not to have a 100x size difference. But with the import done, we just needed to rewire everything we duplicated from tutorial to our new proto asset. And ta-da, we have our new buddy running and jumping around. It's fun to add flair to the tutorial level and shape it more in a tone that suits my objective. And our new little proto buddy is pretty cute, but they are not cold enough in this gray and yellow world and a winter storm looks to be approaching. And for those who don't know, Kenny has amazing 2D and 3D assets and way more on itch.io. Link in the description, but I purchased it all in one bundle a while ago and it's honestly the gift that keeps on giving. Always updating it with new material and as an indie dev, it's amazing for getting something across the finish line or roughing out a concept. The Kenny library alone has enough to make a complete game, which is a really fun idea for a future small game jam. But on the next stream, I start importing these assets. And as a reminder, I'm still learning my way around this Unreal Engine. So this was a good exercise to import and place an assets. It's always a bit strange learning a new engine when you don't have the muscle memory of hotkeys. I might just design a whole level using these assets to better understand the workflow. The Fortnite editor could be a good resource of this as well. I guess it just depends on what excites you. But little by little, our little, little winter wonderland comes to life. And I also instanced a bunch of trees. I knew that instancing was possible when a friend showed me around the engine a few years ago. I had to do some digging to get there, but it looks nice. I'm not sure if this will work in the end, but for now it helps me set the winter mood and keeps the inspiration flowing. I also did some slight color swapping on the shaders as the lighting was washed them out a bit. Lighting is a whole nother deep dive, so dressing it in the shaders was a bit easier for now. And here we have it. Not bad. A cute little winter wonderland. There's still a lot to do, but imagine the only difference between this 
and the tutorial are the visuals. But we're not done because the goal is to make a game that will, on the surface, allow me to snowball fight with some friends. So as our first departure from the tutorial, we need to learn how to throw a ball. And for that, I followed another tutorial here. <laughs> and then I threw in some animations I found on Mixamo. This is the first time I truly realized how much of a scale difference my assets have. It's quite gnarly. Throwing a giant ball was weird and it took me a while to realize I just needed to scale it down. But then we got something started. And feel free to enlighten me below, but here is my next tussle with trying to wrap my head around vectors. I figured out how to draw an arrow to help me visualize it. As for a while, the ball after thrown, it kept getting thrown to world center. And at the time of editing the video, I can't recall what the fix was. And I'll try to interrupt this video if I can recall it, but feel free to jump in and help me understand because I'm definitely failing upwards here. But I was very ecstatic when I finally got this ball to throw forward. I think if I had to loosely remember, I was setting the variable incorrectly or not passing the correct vector to it. And instead of going in front of the character, it was just always going to zero, zero, zero. But however I fixed it, it's fixed and it's working, and I promise to be watching tons of videos on how Unreal Engine uses vectors while working on the next update, but yeah, just glad it's working. And after doing some more node cleanup and accidentally deleting important things and being very grateful that Control Z exists, we move on to explosions. And like with everything else, I'm taking a stab at 3D particle physics for the first time. I tried exploring the marketplace for assets ready to go, but I didn't want anything fancy. So I just tried winging it to see if I can get something that kind of splashes and poofs when the snowball disappears. And it's not bad. It's pretty cute and small, but it helps me really register the idea that snowball is dissipating on impact instead of just disappearing. We also made the ball more snow-like, which I like. But now for player mobility, I also wanted to see if I can get the snow to slow down the player movement. And I wasn't sure the best way to do this. In a perfect world, I could develop a system that slows you down based on the percentage of your hitbox that is submerged. And I couldn't quickly figure out a solution with the time that I had. I felt like I could try to figure out a way to compare how much the player's bounding box is colliding with the snow, but I thought it would be best just to start to make sure the game was actually registering the collision, which we did eventually get. And the next part of the problem was to change where the player's acceleration is set. I had to rewire this a, a lot to work in my favor because I had the movement acceleration being set and reset in various places depending on the input command that was pressed. And this would cause me to potentially exponentially be slower or faster based on how or when I'm changing the base speed of our character so it was a mess but i was able to make progress in this by establishing a lot of like speeds up front and uh, being able to call back to those initial default speeds whenever the character was entering or exiting snow but in the process the nodes did get a bit wiry which is great for cleanup but like with anything else for me just printing out the various speed changes gave me better perspective as to what and when was being updated and once we got it reined in it was just about populating the environment with various snow mounts if the snow slows down the player i wanted to be around the waist height however if we can't get this dynamically sorted out, then I imagine we would have three various heights that slows the player down depending on the depth of snow. And fully interactable snow is a hurdle for much, much, much later. And with the movement sorted, we can talk about gathering ammo. There will be no unlimited bullets for the player, unfortunately, but there will be plenty, if not unlimited ammo, found by scooping up while you're in the snow. And first we can get our scoop animation, which I did find earlier when we were at Mixamo. And honestly, this is probably when I felt like I actually knew something. I have about 20 hours of recording that I had to filter through for this video. And as we near the end, I was able to mostly figure out this entire, you know, click a button, gather ammo, and store the snow process myself. It's all about the small victories. The HUD was a slightly different story. In contrast to my small victory earlier, I definitely needed a tutorial for the HUD. The result I have here is pretty basic, but icons and such can come later. And honestly, what we have is a great place to start and build off of. And now we just need a little bit more flourish so we can call this project done. Falling snow. I'll finesse this later, but I'm pretty happy with this. It's amazing how this started with tutorial and now we are here. I have a lot of hope for this project as I do intend it to be part of a bigger experience that I've been alluding to in my past videos that are months and months and months apart, <laughs> but this does feel pretty good. Thank you for following along and more on this bigger experience soon as I continue to develop the project. And next up, I just need to implement multiplayer. That should be easy, right?